Hey there, this is Alex Soth, and I'm back in my library in St. Paul, Minnesota for another talk. Um, I don't entirely know where this one's going. I know that I'm going to talk about Kim Kardashian and uh, Boris Mikhailov at some point and, and some other stuff in the mix as well. Um, but the, the kind of overall theme of this is, is in a funny way related to my doing these videos. So over the last uh, month and a half or so, when I started doing this, I did it on a, a lark and I didn't know it was going to turn into something I continued. Um, but the feeling once I started was very similar to when I started blogging, man, like, I don't know, 15 years ago or something, I had a blog. And, and that was, a. I used that as a kind of a creative outlet when I was uh, at home or what have you. And, um, and then it opened up this whole new world. And that's kind of the way I feel about these YouTube videos in that it's just exp exposed me to a different audience and different photographers. Um, and I love that. And um, so the other day I, I made this goofy video and uh, that's sort of uh, poking fun at photographers. Um, and, and there were a number of comments talking about how I was punching down and and, you know, as I reflected on it, I thought, well, I'm not really punching. I'm kind of teasing. And it's, uh, I think of it as very lateral, <laughs> the teasing. Um, I mean, essentially, I'm making fun of the thing that I do. You know, it's, uh, I'm a photographer. I was a blogger. Now I'm vlogging. Um, pretty nerdy stuff. So, uh, and, and easily mocked, um, which I'm very aware of. And, uh, and that's something that's, that's true of many things that I've done. I mean, I became a certified laughter yoga instructor, you know, if you don't get mocked for that, what else? Um, but the thing that I wanted to say is that I, I, the thing I love about photography is its democratic nature. And uh, I love that I can uh, have an exhibition of my work and it's something that, you know, my grandmother could see and, and understand um, that it's not necessarily obscure and that it's, um, and that it's accessible and that everyone does it. Um, of course, this creates challenges as well, and and you know the the overwhelming number of images has been a issue in the history of photography, and um, and plagues us still, of course. Um, but uh, that's part of the that's part of the fun. That's not the right word. Part of the <laughs> that's part of the baggage that comes with. Um, choosing to be a photographer is dealing with all that. And, and I, I just, uh, I think it's all funny, you know, you gotta laugh. And, and so I'm laughing at myself as well. Um, but I do, uh, you know, I just do love not just amateur photography, but different genres of photography. And one thing I'm really aware of is how I, my little, pocket of photography sits in this tiny little corner like I imagine a bookstore and I'm in the back of the bookstore on this shelf you know it's kind of near the poetry shelf that no one goes to and um it's back there and it's and and the audience for it in terms of the large world of photography is is really quite small um and, and I do appreciate photographers that exist on more prominent shelves as well. Um, 
sorry, my stomach was growling there. I hope that didn't pick up on the on the <laughs> microphone. Um, one of the things that that I've thought about a lot in my career is is being a Minnesota photographer, and it was uh, it was always a goal of mine to be one of the top ten Minnesota photographers. And and I don't, you know, I I you know I I might be on there, but um, there's a bunch in front of me, and and some of them are in different genres. So let me let me start the talk by um, putting down a book here. Okay. So this is a. Uh, this is a, a very famous book by Jim Brandenburg. Uh, Brandenburg is, uh, has been a photographer in Minnesota forever, National Geographic. Uh, and he has sold, I'm sure, hundreds of thousands of books. Uh, and, and he's, you know, an amazing photographer. Uh, and it's just, it's a different genre that I do, but I totally respect what he does and the connection he has with his place. I, um, actually later today, I'm doing this zoom call with this, um, this young autistic girl that, um, I'm mentoring and, and it's kind of an interesting situation because, um, her, her Zoom camera is off, and she doesn't talk. I only talk to her mom. But um, but I told her about Jim Brandenburg, and she just lit up and and was so excited. Uh, and and Jim has a has a gallery up north, and uh, and so she's excited to visit that. And 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 the power of photography to kind of open up a new world for someone is so fantastic and I would never, uh, disparage that. I, I wanted to share something else about, about Jim Brandenburg because, um, I happened to go to a bookstore the other day for the first time in a long time. And I, I discovered this book, which I'd never seen before. And it's called Minnesota images of home. And this is black and white work by Jim Brandenburg that's really beautiful. And it's beautiful the way it's printed. And th this is a picture here. I'm going to zoom in. I think it's a, I think it's a fantastic image. And, and, and he's a, He's, he's a, a great photographer. One time I was, um, I had a shoot in Germany and my assistant turned out to be like a nature photographer and she worshiped Jim Brandenburg. She, she said, oh my gosh, you're from Minnesota. Um, so it's, there's this awareness that there are different genres and there are different sections of the bookstore. And, and I'm glad that not everyone writes obscure poetry books. Um, another thought I had in terms of Minnesota photography is this book, The Face of Minnesota. So this is by John Sarkowski before he went on to uh, be the curator at MoMA and, and probably the most influential person in my corner of the bookstore. Um, but this work that he made is very general interest work and it reminds me of that, uh, that picture by Jim Brandenburg where it's, you know, it's classically composed, mostly black and white work. These colors are an aberration. things like this. Look how, look how similar that is. And so there is a connection between MoMA art 
and National Geographic art and uh, and and the kind of photography that exists uh, all over the place. So I just want to make clear <laughs> that I'm uh, that I'm a photographer. I always say I'm a photographer rather than an artist, and um, and I realize that that also means I'm a dork. <laughs> So there it goes. Okay. So let's get into what I really wanted to talk about. Kim Kardashian. Um, so this book, which I think was published in 2015, entitled Selfish, uh, it interested me because, I mean, it's a really thick book, and it's... Uh, it's very much a photo book. There's no getting around that that's what it is. And, and it just, it happens to be a photo book that's in a different section in the bookstore and it's going to sell. I'm sure it sold more copies <laughs> in a day than I would sell of my books in a lifetime. Um, and in preparation for this talk, I flipped through every page of the book. I've always treasured it kind of as a conceptual object. I never really looked at it. And I was kind of hoping that it would be revelatory, but, but, it, was, but it wasn't. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's this. And, and there are diary entries or like notes about the pictures, uh, but they are... Um, they're not really very interesting. I mean, she mentions who her makeup person was and, and that kind of thing. Um, the book is organized by year. There is, let's see, what, I, what did I mark here as interesting things to, to talk about? Oh, this was one of the more exciting <laughs> pairs because it was something different. I was in Africa in a diamond mine. I was in Santa Barbara horseback riding with Chloe. Uh, so, you know, we talked about in previous episodes, uh, photo albums and writing, and there you go. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, she sometimes talks about the art of the selfie. She says bedroom selfies right before bed, but you know your makeup looks good, so you have to take a pic. Uh, oh, right. And then this, this, see how there's black paper in here? These are like the naughty pictures. Um, and there's one in here which I want to, I'm not going to like, let me just take this away. So she, she says, yeah, I'm not really showing you very much, but she says, I wasn't intending to put these in the book, but I saw them online during the iCloud hack. I'm not mad at them, LOL. They're taken with a BlackBerry, and I don't have iCloud. It's all a mystery. I thought that was interesting. And, and maybe, you know, if I was giving her, like, a, a critique, I would say, you know, pursue that, pursue the iCloud uh, break in and what happened there. But, uh, I did page through it and I did feel that, that kind of, uh, boy, the weight of banality crushing down on me. And, and it made me think of another really fat book, which is, Jürgen Teller's Go Seize. So this book, I think, was published in 1999 uh, by Scallo. And, and it's, it's another book that sits on my shelf as a conceptual project. And, and again, I don't think I'd ever flip through all of the pages. And, and, I, and I did that. And it was it was pretty interesting experience. I think it would, you know I've made jokes on here about um, doing ASMR. I think I should do ASMR 
videos where I like softly flip through every page of these very long photo books. Um, uh, but the, so the, the conceit of this book, a, a go sees is a, uh, it's a term used in fashion for when a model just shows up. Uh, it's not a casting that kind of shows up and meets the photographer. And so he snaps a picture at the door and it's just this brief encounter. And going through it, I, um, I mean, of course, there, there are more interesting pictures in a million ways than the Kardashian ones, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't connecting with them. I was connecting with sort of the sadness that of all these really young women um, looking for, uh, you know, acknowledgement or fame or whatever, looking to be seen. And so much the same sort of like body types. And um, she was one of the few like memorable pictures. Um, so it's kind of sad. And there were a couple moments that, I mean, so this was pretty amazing. Uh, so this mom, Phoebe's mother, and, and I assume she showed up and Phoebe didn't, and she showed her book. Now that's interesting. Uh, I mean, the whole book is interesting. I, I actually uh, really treasure it as an object, but to actually look at it, that one caught my attention. Uh, he, he almost never breaks the, the routine of the two pictures on each side, except right here. That for some reason, there's, there's one break where he, he looks out the window and it's titled Luciana Curtis. And then I guess we see her there. So, but then otherwise it's just, just hundreds of these pictures um, looking at this and the Kim Kardashian book in, in one sitting, which I did, made me sad. Uh, it's, it, it, I just felt the beauty culture crushing, <laughs> uh, as the father of a teenage daughter, I, you know, I know the impact on her, but I mean, we all feel it in different ways. And it's, uh, and, and, you know, this book is an interesting document for that reason. And even the, the Kardashian book. But it made me want to look at something totally different, but, but I think weirdly related. And that was this fat book by Boris Mikhailov called Case History. And, and this was published by Scalo in the same year as the Jurgen Teller book, uh, 1999. And, and wow, is it different. Uh, but it's, it's relentlessness is similar. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn my camera off um, because... Because I'm going to have to edit this later and and sort of remove the flipping through pages where um, where there's nudity because there's a lot of nudity. Um, but I wanted to to point out Mikhailov's introduction, which is a very good one, uh, where he he talks about this work because it's as you'll see very uh, ethically challenging, and he speaks to that, um, but he's he writes something really interesting about Soviet photography. And oh, that, that brings up something else that I wanted to say. Let me just pop up here for a second. Um, when I was in Ukraine a few years ago, I, uh, I asked, as I often ask when I travel, you know, so who's the most uh, famous 
Ukrainian photographer. I ask a different question when I'm in a different city. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but in, in Odessa, I asked who's the most famous Ukrainian photographer. And everyone said Boris Mikhailov. Um, so I think, you know, I think in the Ukrainian bookstore, he would get front. He would be, you know, he'd be in the window, which is fascinating because his pictures are so difficult. Anyway, I'm yammering on. This thing that he writes is, uh, he says, um, in the history of photography of our country, we don't have photos of the famine in Ukraine in the 1930s when several million people died and corpses were lying in the streets. We don't have photos of the war because journalists were forbidden to take pictures of sorrow threatening the moral spirit of the Soviet people. The entire photography history is dusted. So this, this history of Soviet photography is what Mikhailov is responding to. And I, and it's also the, you know, one of the reasons, and people told me that they can't name many great Ukrainian photographers because you weren't allowed to be a, a great Ukrainian photographer for decades. So at any rate, let's, um, let's start flipping through the pictures. So in this first section, you see um, repeated people in the photographs, and they're often posed almost like uh, subjects in a painting. And, and this is something that Mikhailov is famous for, is posing his subjects. And in this case, the people in the photographs in the whole book are homeless people that that he paid uh, to pose for him. Hence, a lot of the ethical issues. Then it moves into another section with children. So these are presumably homeless children. Like that dog on the street. And then now we begin moving into darker territory. Some of the most impactful pictures I just, I, I'm not going to be able to show on YouTube, but it's, it's people exposing themselves in very graphic ways. So this is a, an interesting moment in the book where we see Mikhailov himself photographed. And, and he's very famous for doing this and often nude. Um, but he's making, <clears throat> he's making his role in this uh, apparent, and it becomes even more apparent later in the book. The section has a lot of crowds and lines. This is interesting from a design perspective because the the pictures are moving around on the on the page in different ways. And and so here you have what could be a panorama or, you know, I think we see it as a panorama, but I don't think it actually is. I think it's two separate photographs and that's what happens here, but they almost look like twins. Um, it's a fascinating sort of visual play. And then these pairings of, of men. So strategies are being employed in here. Um, it's it's different when it's a book with this many photographs. It's it's the rhythms are more subtle. These are just horrendous, chilling photographs. A 
Okay, there was another long passage where I couldn't show any photographs. Um, just all sorts of um, nudity with deformities and very disturbing. So this begins a, a, a different section of the book, just a slightly different section of this man in, in some sort of uniform in his home. And there he is dressed up. This is a nice moment, just kind of a jarring visual stopping point. I think with with this book, um, Mikhailov is making something that's supposed to be so relentless that he's not giving you many breaks. But this one is at le if it's not a period, it's it's at least a comma. So in this section of the book, um, Mikhailov is, is in his own photographs and he's examining uh, his penises and often with deformities. And it's, it's, I mean, we're near the end of the book and it's so uh, hard to look at. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take this book and flip ahead. But then this section ends with a, a somewhat peaceful picture and a little bit of a break. And then this little bit of text, which says, oh, I forgot to say, the man with an ax is a former honored railway worker who had worked for 50 years as a locomotive driver. He killed his favorite cat when he got afraid that he couldn't feed it. And next to this photo, is the picture of a man who long ago painted a white hair red, and the paint, like blood, is still dripping from it. And so, that, so then you have to go back and find that picture, uh, which is which is all the way back here. So the book ends with these winter pictures. Some of them feeling like recreations of paintings. So it's a very different book than this one. But at the same time, I think both of them speak to the democratic nature of photography and the freedoms and agonies of democracy itself. One last thing that I wanted to show is, an, is another Jurgen Teller publication, but with Kim Kardashian. And, and what I think is is, is quite interesting about this publication is the clear influence of Mikhailov. So in the pictures, Teller is, is kind of this half-naked prankster, which is exactly what Mikhailov has done for decades. And, and what's kind of interesting to think about is the influence of Mikhailov in magazine culture or the influence of Kim Kardashian in uh, Ukraine. It's, uh, it's very fluid, this movement between genres. Okay, we've seen enough. You get the idea. So there you have it. Uh, 
that's a really rambling talk, but hopefully I've conveyed a little bit of my feeling about how exhilarating and exasperating the democratic nature of photography is. I love it and it drives me crazy. And I'm happy that I have a place to share these thoughts with you. So I'll see you next time. Thanks so much.